What does chocolate do for me? Well, it does several things. First yeah. of all, it's packed with PEA, which is phenylethylamine, mm -hmm. and that is the thing that courses through our bodies when we're, when we're in love. It's that butterfly feeling. And number two, we have the fact that it melts on the tongue. Uh -huh. But one thing that most people don't know is that chocolate also thins the blood. Anytime the blood is thinner, it flows better. When blood flows better, Sure, please. everything becomes engorged. That's right, you yeah. said it, not me. Martha and I have decided to take my own special version of this classic aphrodisiac to the streets. Chocolate is a famous aphrodisiac, right? Yep. Maybe we should all have some together. I think we Just should. Just to see. God, I love these. The cocoa butter is mm -hmm. one of the few fats that melts on the tongue, and so that's what gives chocolate that creamy, luscious mouthfeel. These are oh, awesome. Delicious. They are awesome, aren't they? Uh-huh. Yes. They're really good. It's got great texture. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing about this, is that there's also mealworms and crickets in here. So they're loaded with all kinds of really good proteins that are also good to put a little hitch in your giddy up. You're not yep. so sure. It tasted wonderful, but I can't believe what I just ate. I like the mealworms better than I like the crickets. Oh, gotcha. Are you serious? What? I forgot to tell you. Uh-huh, yeah. It's got crickets and mealworms, which are also an aphrodisiac. So you're doubling up. I have another one. Oh, God. They're very good. Oh, I love those. Mm -hmm. Is it fun as a pretzel? No. What? You no, know, Chad, I've lost control of my inner monologue. No, seriously, they are mealworms and crickets. Is one of them? Sure. I have to pick You like them? Mm -hmm. Smooth. It is smooth. Oh, did you mean that? I'm sorry, did you mean that pretzels were in here? <laughs> They're in there, aren't they? Oh, no, 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 I'm so, no, 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 they're not pretzels. It's mealworms and crickets, oh. which are also an aphrodisiac Sorry. in a lot of other countries. That's good, though. They are fantastic. Oh, sure. So it's a... I'm grossed out. <laughs> I thought deep fried pickles themselves were a gimmick until I moved to the Midwest. I'm actually quite a fan of them. My kid loves them. We eat them all the time. Fried pickles were introduced here 16 years ago as a shot-in-the-dark idea from three high school buddies. They quickly became an institution. Today, the preferred pickle is one of the top 10 vendors at the fair. They serve several varieties, from stuffed to spicy. This is their newest variation. Fried pickles and chocolate, anyone? This is either going to repulse me beyond words, or I'm gonna look at you, I'm gonna say, you know something? That's quite tasty. Sweet and bitter with the chocolate, sour and salty with the pickle. It's got its four major taste components right there. I'm going in for a second bite, so I gotta be honest with you, that's pretty good. Mm. On a narrow street next to the cathedral, there's one of the best places in town to get a steaming cup of Chocolate Santa Ferreño. It's Bogota's favorite drink. Hot chocolate packed with bread and cheese. It's not that strange. The flavor is really good. Back in 1816, before the cathedral was even finished, a family-run cafe opened next door and eventually got its name, La Puerta Falsa, from a decorative false doorway on the cathedral wall. There, you can see the bricks. Because my business didn't have a name, the people used to say, let's meet at the fake door of the cathedral. Aura Teresa Sabogal is a descendant of the original owners. Along with the cafe, she inherited the family recipe for Chocolate Santa Ferreño. We have conserved it without changing anything about the recipe. Any cup of Santa Ferreño starts with the same basic ingredients. We have boiling water. We are used to it being only chocolate and water. The chocolate is a solid bar of 100% ground Colombian cacao. Melting it in boiling water instead of milk gives a vivid taste of pure chocolate. No sugar and no dairy, yet. The stirring tool is called a molinillo, a forerunner of the whisk invented by Spanish colonists about 300 years ago. This whisk is wooden because a plastic whisk doesn't make the same kind of foam. Then, most cooks add a little cane sugar dissolved in water and cinnamon. Aura Teresa opts for a different spice. She won't say what it is. A little bit is sufficient. 
Chocolate Sante Ferreño comes with one cup of steamy, foaming chocolate served on a plate with bread and rolls and a thick slice of Colombian double cream cheese. Pieces of the cheese are dropped into the chocolate. As it melts, it adds texture, along with a mild dairy taste that's good for dipping or sipping. So it's a bit of a sort of greasy chocolate thing that's really tasty. It is what gives the chocolate that sort of salty kick. For people having their first taste, Chocolante Santa Freño may take some getting used to. It's the oiliness, actually, of the hot chocolate, which is slightly off-putting when you first see it, but then when you taste it, then you realize that it's almost quite buttery, quite rich, and also strong chocolate taste. The dish really is all about the chocolate. Pure cacao melted in boiling water with no milk diluting the impact. But the sweetness, the subtle sweetness, and the dairy fat from the cheese itself accentuate the insane chocolate intensity. It has a flavor that's not sickly sweet. So it's sweet, but it has a pure taste of cacao. It's just right, perfect. In Ed's Kitchen, dessert is also a testing ground to showcase fresh Kentucky ingredients. In tonight's case, that means tobacco, julienne, and baked into delicate chocolate cookies. And if you eat about four of them, you won't get a buzz. It's like chewing tobacco. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Four of them? <laughs> <laughs> wow. For anybody who's ever chewed the end of the grandfather's cigar, there's a wonderful sort of biting tannic quality this with the fudge that's just absolutely gorgeous. It's a lovely finish. While most of New York City sleeps, there's feverish work happening in some out-of-the-way places. Take this 100-year-old elevator up four floors, and you'll find Hana Kitchens. Nicole Berman Solo is one of the tenants and one of the landlords. Nicole developed a passion for Japanese cooking as a business student in Tokyo. A few years ago, she chucked her white-collar business career and launched Kyotofu, giving familiar desserts a surprising twist with Japanese ingredients. Brownies, seasoned with the earthy, fermented, salty tang of miso. Miso is delicious. Oh, it's awesome. And you, in it's, sweets. And it's not like super, uh, it's kind of subtle. And it's, and it's just meant to like balance out the sweetness yeah. of the chocolate. Mm -hmm. But chocolate needs that. Yeah. Chocolate needs partners like miso. Absolutely. It's kind of a cool brownie, huh? That's amazing. <laughs> Deceptive nuanced sweets aren't just being practiced in home kitchens. In this town, making food that fools the eye is a popular art form. This is an ordinary looking chocolate bar, rendered and mixed with a very unordinary ingredient. That's extraordinary. I had no idea those two ingredients would have such an affinity for each other. The two ingredients are Bolivian chocolate and duck liver pate, a foie gras bar. That's beautiful. Thank you. That's beautiful. Unique combinations like these are the brainchild of David Briggs, owner of Chocolatel de David. He's a chocolatier who's spent the past three years testing the limits of savory in sweets. He'll try injecting brown butter, olive oil, even whole quarts of hot pig's blood, and chicharron. Fried pig skins are delicious, but who thinks of pairing them with chocolate? Part of it stems from me being trained as a, as a cook. I come from the savory side, so when I got into chocolate, the things that I was always attracted to were things that were salty, things that worked with chocolate in that respect. Bolivian chocolate is seasoned with French sea salt and dried Spanish espelette pepper. And then crushed chicharron is added. It's a stunner. Eat it. That's really awesome. Pork, salt, and chili. I'm not a huge fan mm -hmm. of chocolates like this. And this is just gorgeous. Oh, thank you. And so is David's riff on a classic breakfast spread. In this kitchen, foie gras and chocolate keep finding each other. What's that? Foie tella. Foie tella. It took months of R&D for David to perfect his foie tella, rich gobs of fat and duck liver rendered into rich tart Bolivian chocolate. Mm. Oh, I love to eat foie gras. There is a unique flavor to that liver. Mm -hmm. And you've honored that. I, it's, it's not lacking. In fact, it's better. You've used the foie and the cacao in just the perfect way. 
That really, really is good. David's workspace is a shared counter in the back of a friend's sandwich shop. That hasn't stopped him from becoming one of Portland's most sought after chocolatiers. You can be and can become and can actualize whatever you want to do. And I think what you're doing here in small format in the back of a sandwich yeah. shop proves that.